Hi boys and girls, this is Miss Simpson here. Welcome back to another one of our videos where we are going to be reading aloud the book, The BFG by Roald Dahl. I hope that you've been joining us for our last few videos where we have been starting to read about the BFG and the story about our, our character Sophie and what's been going on so far. So in the beginning of our video, like we normally do, I'm going to have a quick recap of what's happened so far, and then we're going to jump right in and keep on reading. So, so far in our story, we know that we have an orphan named Sophie, and we know that Sophie found this giant creature walking during the witching hour. And if you remember, the witching hour was that nighttime uh, where all the adults were asleep. And so it was that time where the giants came out, or so we think because that's what it looks like she saw. And then we just left off where Sophie was taken and the giant was running and running and running to this island. And then they went into a cave behind this giant rock. And then our question last week was what was going to happen next? So trying to figure out what was the giant going to do? We don't know. So we're just gonna jump right in. We're gonna continue reading. Our next chapter is called the BFG. The giant picked up the trembling Sophie with one hand and carried her across the cave and put her on the table. Now he's really going to eat me, Sophie thought. The giant sat down and stared, so, stared hard at Sophie. He had truly enormous ears. Each one was as big as the wheel of a truck and he seemed to be able to move them inwards and outwards from his head as he wished. I is hungry, the giant boomed. He grinned, showing his massive square teeth. The teeth were very white and very square, and they sat in his mouth like huge slices of white bread. P Please don't eat me, Sophie stammered. The giant let out a bellow of a laughter. <laughs> Just because I is a giant, you think I is a man gobbling cannibal he shouted. You is about right. Giants is all cannibal, he shouted. And they does gobble up human beings. We is out in giant country now. Giants is everywhere around. Out there has us the famous bone crunching giant. Bone crunching giant crunches up Two whoopsy whiffling human beings for supper every night. Noise is ear bursting. Noise of crunching bones goes crackety crack for miles around. Ouch, Sophie said. Bone crunching giant only gobbles human beings from turkey, the giant said. Every night, bone cruncher is galloping off to turkey to gobble turks. Sophie's sense of patriotism was suddenly so bruised by this remark that she became quite angry. Why Turks, she blurted out. What's wrong with the English? Bone crunching giant says Turks is tasting oh ever so much juicier and more scrum diddly umptious. Bone cruncher says Turkish human beans has a glamourly flavor. He says Turks from Turkey of tasting like turkey. I suppose they would, Sophie said. Of course they would, the giant shouted. Every human being is diddly and different. Some is scrum diddly umptious, some is ucky slush. Greeks is a full of ucky slush. No giant is eating Greeks, ever. Why not, Sophie asked. Greeks from Greece is all tasting greasy, said the giant. I imagine that's possible too, Sophie said. She was wondering with a bit of a tremble what all this talking about eating people was leading up to. Whatever happens, she simply must play along with this peculiar giant and smile at all of his jokes. But why were they jokes? Perhaps the great brute was just working up an appetite by talking about food. As I am saying, the giant went on, all human beings is having different flavors. Human beans from Panama is tasting very strong of hats. 
Why hats, Sophie said. You is not very clever, the giant said, moving his great ears in and out. I thought all human beings is full of brains. Your head is emptier than a bundongle. Do you like vegetables, Sophie asked, hoping to steer the conversation towards a slightly less dangerous kind of food. You is trying to change the subject, the giant said sternly. We is having an interesting blab about, about the taste of a human being. And the human being is not a vegetable. Oh, but the bean is a vegetable, Sophie said. Not the human bean, the giant said. The human bean has two legs and a vegetable has no legs at all. Sophie didn't argue anymore. The last thing she wanted to do was make the giant cross. The human being, the giant went on, is coming in dillions of different flavors. For instance, human beans from Wales is tasting very woolish, whooshily a fish. There is something very fishy about whales. You mean whales, Sophie said. Whales is something quite different. Whales is whales, said the giant. Don't gobble funk around with the words. I will now give you another example. Human beans from Jersey has a most disgustable woolly tickle on the tongue, the giant said. Human beans from Jersey is tasting of cardigans. You mean jerseys, Sophie said. You are once again gobble funking, the giant shouted. Don't do it. This is serious and snitching subject. May I continue? Please do, Sophie said. Danes from Denmark is tasting ever so much of dogs, the giant went on. Of course, Sophie said, they taste of Great Danes. Wrong, cried the giant, slapping his thigh. Danes from Denmark is tasting doggy because they're tasting of Labradors. Then what do people of Labrador taste like, Sophie asked. Danes, said the giant, cried triumphantly. Great Danes. Aren't you getting a bit mixed up, Sophie said. I is a very mixed up giant, the giant said, but I does do my best. And I does not nearly mix up as much as the other giants. I know one who gallops all the way into Wellington for his supper. Wellington, Sophie said. Where's Wellington? Your head is full of squashed flies, the giant said. Wellington is New Zealand. The human beings in Wellington have an especially scrum diddly umptious taste. So says Welly eating giant. What do the people of Wellington taste of, Sophie asked. Boots, the giant said. Of course, Sophie said. I should have known. Sophie decided that this conversation had now gone on long enough. If she was going to be eaten, she'd rather get it over with and done right with right away and then be kept hanging around here anymore. What sort of human beings do you eat? She asked, trembling. Me, shouted the giant, his mighty voice making the glass jars rattle on the shelves. Me gobbling up human beans? This I never... The others, yes, but not me. I is a freaky giant. I is a nice and jumbly giant. I is the only nice and jumbly giant in Giant County. I is the big friendly giant, the BFG. What is your name? My name is Sophie, Sophie said hardly daring to believe the good news that she had just heard. Now we have learned who the BFG is and what the BFG stands for. So now we know that he is the big friendly giant and hopefully he's not going to eat her. We're gonna go on to the next chapter. It is called The Giants. But if you are so nice and friendly, Sophie said, then why did you snatch me from my bed and run away with me? Because you saw me, the big friendly giant answered. If anyone is ever seeing a giant, he or she must be taken away in a hip switch. Why? asked Sophie. 
Well, first of all, said the BFG, human beings is not really believing in giants, is they? Human beings is not thinking we exist. I do, said Sophie. Ah, but that is only because you seen me, cried the BFG. I cannot possibly allow anyone, even little girls, to be seeing me and staying at home. The first thing you would be doing is you would be scuttling around yodeling the news that you actually seen a giant and a great giant hunt, a mighty giant looksy, would be starting up all over the world with the human beings all rummaging for the great giant you saw and getting wildly excited. People would be coming, rushing, and bushing after me with goodness knows what, and they would be catching me and locking me into a cage, and they would be and to be stared at. They would be putting me into the zoo or the bunkum house with all those squiggling hippo dumplings and crocodile dillies. Sophie knew that what the giant said was true. If any person reported actually having seen a giant haunting the streets of a town at night, there would most certainly be a terrific hullabaloo across the whole world. I will bet you, the BFG went on, that you would have been splashing the news all over the wonky world, wouldn't you, if I hadn't wiggled you away? I suppose I would, said Sophie. And what, and that would never do, said the BFG. So what will happen to me now? Sophie asked. If you do go back, you will be telling the world, said the BFG. And most likely on the Telly Telly Bumpkin Box, the radio squeaker, you will just have to be staying here with me for the rest of your life. Oh no, cried Sophie. Oh yes, said the BFG. But I'm warning you, not ever to go whiffling about about this cave without, without I. Without I is with you, or you will be coming to an unlucky, ucky, mucky end. I is showing you now who is going to eat you up if they's is ever catching one little glimpse of you. The big friendly giant picked Sophie off the table and carried her into the cave entrance. He rolled the huge stone to one side and said, Peep over there, little girl, and tell me what you's be seeing. Sophie, sitting on the BFG's hand, peeped out of the cave. The sun was up now and the shining fiery hot over the great yellow wasteland with its blue rocks and dead trees. Is you seeing them? The BFG asked. Sophie, squinting through the glare of the sun, saw several tremendous tall figures moving about the rocks about 500 yards away. Three or four others were sitting quite motionless on the rocks themselves. This is giant country, the giant said. Those all giants over there, every one of them. It was a brain boggling sight. The giants were all naked except for a short, a sort of short skirt around their waists and their skins were burnt brown by the sun. But it was the sheer size of each one of them that got Sophie that boggled Sophie's brain most of all. They were simply colossal, far taller and wider than, a BF, than the big friendly giant upon whose hands she was now sitting. And oh, how ugly they were. Many of them had large bellies. All of them had long arms and big feet. They were too far away for their faces to be seen clearly, but perhaps that was a good thing. What on earth are they doing? Sophie asked. Nothing, said the BFG. They's is just moochelin' and foochelin' around and waiting for night to come. Then they will be gallopin' off to places where people is livin' to find their suppers. You mean turkey, Sophie said. Bone crunching giant will be galloping to jerky of turkey, of course, said the BFG. But the others will be whiffling to all sorts of flung away places like Wellington for the booty flavor and Panama for the hatty taste. Every giant is having his own favorite hunting ground. Do they ever go to England? Sophie asked. Often, said the BFG. 
They say English is tasting ever so wonderfully of cod scallop. I'm not sure I know what that means, Sophie said. Meanings is not important, said the BFG. I cannot be right all the time. Quite often, eyes is left instead of the right. Are all those beastly giants over there really going off again tonight to eat people? Sophie asked. All of them is guzzling human beings every night, the BFG answered. All of them excepting me. That's why you will be you will be coming an ucky mucky end if any of them should be getting his gogglers upon you. You would be swallowed up like a piece of frumpkin pie all in one dollop. But eating people is horrible, Sophie cried. It's frightful. Why doesn't anybody stop them? And who please is going to be stopping them, asked the BFG. Couldn't you? asked Sophie. Never in a pig's whistle, cried the BFG. All of those man-eating giants is enormous and very fierce. They is all at least two times my wideness and double my royal heightness. Twice as high as you, cried Sophie. Easily that, said the BFG. Uses seeing them in the distance, but just wait till you get them up close. Those giants is all at least 50 feet tall with huge muscles and cockles alive, alive, oh. Eyes is the titchy one. Eyes is the runt. 24 feet is puddle nuts in giant country. You mustn't feel bad about that, Sophie said. I think you are just great. Even when your toes must be as big as sausages. Bigger, said the giant looking pleased. They's as big as bumple hammers. How many giants are there out there? Sophie asked. Nine altogether, said the BFG. That means, said Sophie, that somewhere in the world every single night, nine wretched people get carried away and eaten alive? More, said the BFG. It's all dependent, you see, on how big the human beans is. Japanese beans is very small. So a giant will need to gobble up about six Japanese before he's feeling full up. Others, like the Norway people and the Yankee Doodles, is ever so much bigger, and usually two or three of those make a good tuck-in. But do these disgusting giants go to every single country in the world, Sophie asked? All countries except in Greece is getting visited sometime or another, the BFG answered. The country which giants visit is depending on how he's feeling. If it's very warm weather, and a giant's feeling as hot as a sizzle pan, he'll probably go galloping far up Frisbee North and get himself an Eskimo or two, or two to cool him down. A nice fat Eskimo to a giant is like a lovely ice cream lolly to you. I'll take your word for it, Sophie said. And then again, if it is a frosty night and a giant's fridging with cold, he'll probably point his nose towards the sweltering hotlands to guzzle a few hot and tots to warm him up. How perfectly horrible, Sophie said. Nothing hots a cold giant up like a hot, hotter tot, the BFG said. And if you were to put me down on the ground and I was to walk among them now, Sophie said, would they really eat me up? Like a whiff swaddle, cried the BFG. And what's more, you are so small, they wouldn't even have to chew you. The first one to be seeing you would pick you up with his fingers and down you'd go like a drain water. Let's get back inside, Sophie said. I hate even watching them. And that is the end of the chapter called Giants. So what I would like you guys to do for your writing for this section is I would like you to describe the BFG. So using those adjectives like we've talked about and using those descriptive words, how would you describe the BFG? So I'd like at least one or two sentences where you talk about how the BFG is, what makes him who he is. Kind of talk about his personality. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed listening to our story today. I cannot wait until next time. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.